All right, let's fix the second definition of linear dependence that we came up with in the last video. We now have two definitions of linear dependence. According to the first one, a set of vectors is linearly dependent if at least one of them is a linear combination of the rest. That definition is all right. The second definition is a set of vectors is linearly dependent if there exists a linear combination that equals zero. The second definition is not quite all right. There is a problem with it. As I mentioned in the last video, it's missing a very important word. So let's figure out what that word is. Let's apply the two definitions to this pair of vectors. Are they linearly dependent? They aren't. Let's see it according to the first definition. Is A a linear combination of B? And of course, when we're down to one vector, linear combination simply means a multiple. So is A a multiple of B? Well, it's not, because all multiples of B lie along this line. So A is not multiple of B, and B is similarly not a multiple of A. So these set of vectors is clearly linearly independent. Let's see if that still holds according to the second definition. Does there exist a linear combination that equals zero? Well, of course there does. There always does. No matter what set of vectors you take, whether they're linearly dependent or independent or just one vector, there always exists a linear combination that yields the zero vector. It's the linear combination of all zeros. This linear combination for all vectors, whether they are linearly dependent or linearly independent equals zero. And you can say, well, wait a second, that's cheating. That doesn't count. That wasn't the intention of the definition. The intention of the definition was to say something substantial about the relationship among vectors. This doesn't say anything about the relationship among vectors because it holds for all vectors. So we must exclude this definition. This definition is not very helpful. If you think back to the last video and recall what we use these linear combinations for, it's to add them to another linear combination and to alter the coefficients without altering the value. But of course, in the case of this linear combination, it would be completely useless because it won't change the value, but it won't change the coefficients either. So it's an all around useless linear combination that should be excluded from the definition. So this, this linear combination has a name. It's called the trivial linear combination. Trivial linear combination means that all coefficients are zero. So we should exclude it. So the definition should read a set of vectors is linearly dependent if there exists a non-trivial linear combination that equals zero. A set of vectors is linearly dependent if there exists a non-trivial linear combination that equals zero. A non-trivial linear combination is opposite of trivial. So if trivial has all coefficients zero, non-trivial means at least one is not zero. So this is a logical not that you have to get used to. If you're not used to this kind of logic, you may say that opposite of trivial, non-trivial, means that all of the coefficients are not zero. That's not it. Opposite of trivial is at least one coefficient is not zero. Because if trivial reads all coefficients are zero, you have to put not in front of the whole thing. So all coefficients are zero. The opposite is not all coefficients are zero. So at least one coefficient is not zero. So if you can combine a set of vectors into a linear combination where at least one coefficient is not zero, that linear combination is non-trivial and that set of vectors is linearly dependent. So good job, we have fixed the second definition of linear dependence. Now in the next video, I will formally show that the two definitions are equivalent.